Welcome to this tutorial on buffers and in case you're wondering why I'm showing you this uh, bizarre range of household products it's because of course they all contain um, buffers of one form or another. Now a buffer is uh, simply a solution which resists a change to its pH upon the addition of a small amount of acid or alkali or you could say a small amount of acid or base. Details like that you need to check them with your own specification just look in your textbooks but what you must never say is that a buffer completely prevents a change in the pH. The pH of a buffer does change when you add a small amount of acid or alkali to it and indeed you will be learning how to uh, calculate the change in the pH of a buffer. So all buffers, they have their own um, target pH that is predetermined. So you've selected a buffer to keep a solution at a particular pH and it will try to minimise any changes from that pH. So a good example, obviously it's not shown here, is the blood. So the pH of blood is about um, 7.4 and it's very important to the body to maintain the blood at that pH. Um, if it deviates far from that, then there are very uh, severe consequences. Similarly, in, in, in biochemistry, you come across buffers quite a lot. If you're studying um, an enzyme, you carry out an enzyme catalyzed reaction in, in a test tube, uh, you need to make sure that the uh, pH is maintained um, typically at pH 7.4. Again, if we were to um, deviate from that pH, then the enzyme, its activity would decrease because it would denature. And similarly, when you're growing cells in, in cell culture systems, again, you have to use a buffer. And also in many chemical reactions, you may wish to uh, carry out a chemical reaction at a particular pH. And many chemical reactions, of course, they either um, use um, acid or they produce acid or they use base or produce base. So just left unbuffered, the pH in the reaction system would gradually change. So a buffer is designed to minimize such a change. So this uh, tutorial, I'm really only going to cover the basics, um, explain what buffers are, which I've just told you, um, explain how they work, and how to do the key calculations that you need. But there's some of the more sort of developed or ad advanced aspects, such as the um, use of the PKA, um, I'm going to cover that in a in a separate tutorial. Okay then, so before we get started, um, I'd just like to run you through this list of the topics that I'm going to cover in this tutorial, because it is uh, quite a long one, um, but it does cover all of the basic skills that you need to know. So I would consider the calculations I'm going to show you here to be the minimum that you would need to know, the absolute minimum, to be able to uh, have a good chance in the exam questions. Now, um, I should also say that before watching this tutorial, uh, do make sure you have watched the others on acids and bases, in particular um, how to calculate the pH of a solution from its hydrogen ion concentration and particularly how to um, calculate the pH of a weak acid. So you need to have a good understanding of what we mean by the term weak acid. Now almost all of these calculations well, in fact, all of these calculations are going to involve calculations on buffers um, based on weak acids, so they're called the acidic buffers. There are also basic buffers, and there's very little mention of them in the specifications. Um, it's a good idea to understand how a basic buffer works, but I've yet to see any calculations on their actions in the A-level books, so that will come at the end. I'll just give you a very basic, ex no pun intended, a very simple example of how a basic buffer works. Now, acidic buffers and basic buffers, they are defined slightly differently in some of the textbooks. Um, sometimes you'll see an acidic buffer defined as a buffer that maintains a pH in the acidic range, i.e. below pH 7, and a basic buffer that is one that maintains a pH above pH 7. But in other cases you will see them defined as an acidic buffer being a buffer that's based on um, a weak acid and its conjugate base, whereas a basic buffer is uh, a buffer based on a weak base and its conjugate acid. You'll see what all that means in due course, but the, the two um, definitions are not co always completely compatible, and all you have to do is check in your own specification on um, 
the, the definition that you're required to learn. It's as simple as that. These definitions aren't always perfect. They don't always fit all, all, all cases, all situations. So I'm going to show you these calculations then based on acidic buffers, uh, how they work, the different components of an acidic buffer, how they counteract changes in pH, how to calculate the, uh, the pH that a buffer with a particular composition will maintain, and then how to calculate the, uh, the change to the pH of a buffer following the addition of a small amount of acid or base or acid or alkali. It's a very common question in the exams. And also a very common question is um, to be able to um, calculate the pH of a buffer created by adding some alkali to a weak acid. Uh, that's a, a neutralization process, but you make sure the acid is in excess, so you only get partial neutralization. Again, that will all make a lot of sense when I run through the examples. And uh, as I said at the very beginning, that uh, some of the other skills, uh, which I think are important to look at, they will be covered in subsequent tutorials. Let's now take a look at how an acidic buffer works. Well, the acidic buffers, they have two components to them. One is a weak acid, which will almost always be a carboxylic acid, and the other is a salt of the weak acid. And these two components each have a particular job to play in keeping the pH of the system at the predetermined value. So we'll start off by looking at the, the job or the role of the, um, the weak acid and since we're all familiar with ethanoic acid I will use that as an example. Ethanoic acid is a uh, weak acid of course so when it's dissolved in water only a very tiny proportion of the molecules will in fact have dissociated. So what's happening here is the two electrons represented by this line, this uh, covalent bond, they both go onto the oxygen. So the oxygen gets back its own electron that it put into the covalent bond, but it also gets the electron that the hydrogen contributed. So the oxygen has a negative charge. And the hydrogen then, it has lost it, the electron it put into this bond, so it's got a positive charge. So we have a proton and a carboxylate ion. The proton, of course, doesn't exist as such in um, aqueous solution. Its charge density is too high, so it, is, it um, attaches to a water molecule, forms a dative covalent bond to give the oxonium ion. Now, I've represented this reaction using a dotted line because I wanted to emphasize that only a very small proportion of the molecules have dissociated into ions. But of course we should represent that using an equilibrium sign. So um, there is the equilibrium sign. Now the job of this um, arm of the buffer system, if you like, is to neutralize any hydroxide ions added to the solution. And this is done by the uh, H plus ions in the solution reacting with the added hydroxide ions, so if you've added a small amount of alkali or base to the, the buffer system and they will be neutralized to give water. Now I did say that you've got a very low concentration of H plus ions in solution because the acid only goes, undergoes partial dissociation but of course um, this is where we have to remember the Le Chatelier's principle um, that you learnt about in uh, year 12 in AS um, if you have a reaction system at equilibrium, a reversible reaction at equilibrium, and you make a change to that system, so if I remove some of the H plus ions, then the position of the equilibrium moves so as to counteract the change that you've made. So I remove some H plus ions, the equilibrium of course moves to the right to restore the H plus ions, and so we're back to the equilibrium. And so the carboxylic acid over here is acting as a store or a reservoir of H plus ions. It's a good way to think of it. I can just write that down. A store of H plus ions, ready to release them to intercept hydroxide ions from small amounts of added alkali. Let's now take a look at the role of the salt of the weak acid in the buffer. 
Well, a salt is formed when the H plus ions of an acid are replaced by a different positive ion. So here is the, um, the ethanoate ion. So it's the carboxylic acid having lost its proton and we could put a different positive ion there. So I can put, for example, the sodium ion, the potassium ion, the ammonium ion. And when this one dissolves in water, it gives the, um, the carboxylic carboxylate ion, as we see with the, uh, with the original acid. However, the big difference is that the salt dissociates completely into ions when it's dissolved in water. That's what happens when an ionic substance dissolves in water. Um, it dissociates completely into the positive and negative ions, which of course become hydrated. So by adding the, um, the salt of the weak acid, what we're doing is we're creating a high concentration of the carboxylate ions in the buffer system. And the job of the carboxylate ions is to intercept added protons. So if I add some H plus ions, a small amount of acid is added to our buffer system. And all that happens is that they combine with the carboxylate ions to make the carboxylic acid, where we've removed the H plus ions from the buffer. Okay, here then I've written out the um, the equilibrium reaction that is at the heart of our um, buffer system. Um, we have a high concentration of the carboxylic acid because this was added directly as ethanoic acid. But we've also got a high concentration of the ethanoate ions because this was added as um, a salt. So that's, in our case, it was um, sodium ethanoate. If we didn't add this as the salt, then there would be a very low concentration of, of the ethanoate ion in the solution because it uh, comes from dissociation of the ethanoic acid but only a small proportion of these ever dissociate. So by adding uh, sodium ethanoate here, because this dissociates completely in water, we're getting a high concentration of the ethanoate ions. So we're sort of fudging the system. The concentration of H plus ions will still be very low. So of course, as I said previously, when we add um, a small amount of hydroxide ions, they get intercepted by the H plus ions. And the H plus ions that have been removed, they are replaced by dissociation of the ethanoic acid. So the language they're looking for in the exams is that um, upon the addition of a small amount of alkali, um, upon the addition of a small amount of alkali, the equilibrium moves to the right. Okay, so we remove some H plus ions, lost them because they've neutralised the hydroxide ions, so more of the intact molecules dissociate. So, the, so upon the addition of a small amount of alkali, the equilibrium moves to the right-hand side. And if you look at the mark schemes, the POS papers are always looking for that kind of language. And Similarly, when we add a small amount of um, H plus ions, they will combine with the uh, ethanoate ion to generate more of the um, ethanoic acid. And again, the, the language you're looking for in the exams is um, upon the addition of a small amount of acid, or just H+, plus, 
the equilibrium moves to the left hand side because you're reacting the ethanoate with some H plus, so it's moving that way. Why do we need to add a high concentration of this? Because if you remove some of this by its reaction with added H plus, surely more of this will dissociate. But of course, if we uh, combine that with some H plus to make the ethanoic acid, so we've lost some of that. If more of that was to dissociate, then every one of those that dissociates to replace this one would make another H+. So we're back where we started, we've still got a H plus to remove. So that's why you have to add this as the, um, as the salt. Here then I'm going to show you how to calculate the, uh, the pH that will be maintained by a buffer. So at the heart of every buffer you have the equilibrium reaction for the dissociation of the carboxylic acid and um, but we remember that the um, the carboxylate anion, the conjugate base its concentration has been boosted because we've added it directly as a salt um, but I'm not showing the uh, the sodium ions in this in this equation because um, they're just there as a spectator ion, they don't, they don't get involved so let's say I've chosen to make a buffer by mixing together ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. So the final concentrations in the solution in the buffer system are 0.2 and 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed respectively. Now the values of these concentrations that I choose they're going to affect the final pH and uh, this is how we calculate it. I've written here the uh, expression for the acid dissociation constant of the acid and um, all we have to do is put in the concentrations of the ethanoate ion, the ethanoic acid and the H plus ions we'll be able to calculate from which we get the pH. Now again, always emphasize to people that these concentrations are the concentrations at equilibrium. Okay? However, we can make some assumptions as we do when we calculate the pH of a weak acid. Um, first of all, we're going to ignore the fact that um, some of this has dissociated. So we're going to assume that the concentration of intact ethanoic acid molecules in our buffer solution is 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed. 0.2. Even though a tiny proportion of them will have dissociated. Now this is where you've got to be very careful because a lot of students they make the big mistake of um, assuming that these two concentrations are the same. When you look at this equation you say for every one of those you get one of those and one of those. Now that's true if you're calculating the pH of a pure weak acid but remember in this case the concentration of this is much higher because we've added it directly as the um, as the salt. So these are not the same so you can't just put H plus squared on the top of this equation as you do when you're making calculations on, uh, on weak acids. So the concentration of the ethanoate ion, we're going to put there the concentration of the sodium ethanoate that we added. So you're assuming that the, that's the only source of the ethanoate ion. So that's 0.15 moles dm to minus 3. So we know that's going to have dissociated completely, but we're ignoring the small contribution of ethanoate ions from the dissociation of the carboxylic acid. Okay, so that simplifies down. The Ka value for ethanoic acid is uh, 1.7 uh, times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3. And then I just put in these values, so it's going to be 0 0.15 moles dm to the minus 3. Uh, times the H plus concentration, which is the one I'm looking for, over the concentration of the ethanoic acid, 0 0.20 moles dm to the minus 3. I'm just going to make a bit of space up here now. So we're saying one point seven times ten to the minus five moles dm to minus 3 and then cancel down some of the units so 0.15 divided by 0.2 that's going to be 
0.75 multiplied by the concentration of H plus. So if I cross multiply and put this one under here, so 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 divided by 0 0.75 is going to give me my H plus concentration. Do that on the calculator. So 1.7 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.75 and it's uh, 2.26. Uh, I'm just going to do it to, uh, I'll do it to three figures for now. 2.27 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 equals h plus. So you see how by including my units at all steps in the calculation, the correct units for the answer always fall out. It's a really good um, internal check of your calculations. So then to get the, um, the pH of the square if I take the log of the H plus concentration, so I just do log of answer, and that's telling me minus 4.6, so the pH would be 4.6, just to two figures. At the beginning of this tutorial, I pointed out that um, when you're asked to give the definition of a buffer, you must say that it is a solution which resists a change in pH upon the addition of small amounts of acid or base. And it is very important that you um, don't say that it completely prevents a change in pH. And I'm going to show you now how to work out what happens to the pH when you do add some acid or base to a buffer. That's a typical calculation that comes up in the exam questions. So I'm taking here the example that we have um, used so far. Uh, this is the expression for the Ka, which is a constant for a particular temperature. So in the case of the ethanoic acid and the ethanoate uh, system, we have 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. And all we did to calculate the prevailing pH of a buffer made using 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed of the ethanoate ion and 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed of the ethanoic acid is just put the numbers in this equation, obtain the uh, hydrogen ion concentration which was 2.27 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed and from that we got the pH of 4.6 and just to remind you that the um, this concentration is really the concentration of the salt that we put in so in the example it was um, sodium ethanoate which dissociates completely now this equation, um, I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit to help you see how the addition of a small amount of acid or base affects the pH of the buffer. And so what I'm going to do is um, take these two terms and keep them on their own and separate out the H+. plus. So if I write 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 keep these two together so it's going to be 0 0.15 mole dm to the minus 3 over 0 0.20 moles dm to the minus 3 and all that multiplied by the H plus concentration and that way I've separated the uh, the one that we're interested in the H plus concentration and this is a constant of course and if we're aiming for a particular uh, H plus concentration and hence pH, the only thing we can play with is the ratio of these two, the concentrations of the um, anion and the and, and the associated acid. And um, Now I know that a lot of people are not that confident in maths and so if you if you are confident in maths I apologize for what I'm about to show you but let me just show you what I've done. If you imagine you've got 3 times 4 divided by 2 so that's going to be 12 divided by 2, it's 6. You can rearrange this in various ways. So you could do 3 over 2, which is 1.5 times 4, that equals 6. Or you could do um, 3 times 4 over 2, so 3 times uh, 2 equals 6. And that's all I've done in rearranging this equation. But it allows us to see how 
it's this ratio which affects the hydrogen ion concentration. Here then is a calculation typical of the kind you may be asked to uh, answer in the exams. It's um, asking you to calculate the, the new pH of a buffer following the addition of a small amount of alkali. So this is the buffer system we've looked at already. Uh, it consists of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid with 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed of the ethanoate ion, which of course was added as sodium ethanoate. We use the um, acid dissociation constant to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration from which we found a pH at of 4.6. So that's the pH that the buffer is going to try to maintain and we'll see what happens to that when we add to 50 centimeters cubed of this buffer um, a 1 centimeter cubed sample of 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide solution. Now let's just take a, a look at that. So we have a bottle and it says on the label NaOH, so that's with an AQ, so that's sodium hydroxide dissolved in water and it tells us that we've got 0 0.50 moles dm to the minus 3. Now that is a little bit misleading. What it really means is you've got separate sodium ions and hydroxide ions in the solution. So when an ionic substance dissolves it dissociates completely into the individual ions and of course one of those will give one of those and one of those. So it's the same as saying we've got a solution of uh, hydroxide ions of concentration 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Now what's going to happen, uh, these um, hydroxide ions are going to be neutralized upon reaction with the H plus ions in the buffer and although the H plus ion concentration is very low we've got this uh, reservoir of H plus ions so once we remove some of the H plus ions the more of the intact ethanoic acid molecules will dissociate to restore the equilibrium. So that's the uh, Le Chatelier's principle at work. And what we've got to do is calculate how that's going to change the pH of the buffer because if some of the um, ethanoic acid molecules are used or consumed, dissociate to produce H plus ions, it means that we're going to have a different concentration of the ethanoic acid in the in the um, in the buffer solution. So let's write this as a neutralization reaction. We've got this equilibrium in our buffer, and we can write um, sodium hydroxide is giving us um, sodium ions plus hydroxide ions. If we add these two reactions together, then we've got ethanoic acid plus sodium hydroxide on the left hand side and they're going to give sodium ethanoate now I'll just write that as a salt in solution of course these will be separate ions and we also get the H2O so all we've got to do is work out how many moles of um, ethanoic acid will be used in this reaction and that will bring down this concentration but notice how when the ethanoic acid reacts we're making the sodium ethanoate so that will increase the concentration of the ethanoate ion so both of those changes will affect the buffer. Now if we've added, let's have a look at the sodium hydroxide, it's um, one centimeter cubed of um, 
zero moles dm to the minus three. What we've got to do here is work in moles. The equation is telling us that one mole of ethanoic acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide to give one mole of this salt and one mole of water. So don't work in concentrations at this point, do everything in, in, in moles, in numbers of moles, and then at the end we'll go back to concentrations when we need to uh, calculate the H plus concentration. So um, let me just do this. So if I've got the way I do this, I don't use all these uh, unnecessary formulae that they teach you at AS Chemistry. I just put in my calculator 0.5 and that's saying I've got that many moles in one decimeter cube. Let me just show you that. When it says 0.5 moles per decimeter cube, what it means is 0 0.5 moles in one dm cubed. And because a dm cubed is a thousand centimeters cubed, I can write here a thousand centimeters cubed. So I've put in a calculator 0.5, I divide that by a thousand, and that's telling me I've got five times ten to the minus four moles in one centimeter cubed. Okay, so that's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide I have added. So I'm just going to write that up there. So it's going to be 0 0.0005 moles, 5 times 10 to the minus 4. And this one, well, remember the total volume of the buffer, it's 50 centimetres cubed. You need to take that into account. And we're saying that in, in a decimetre cube we've got 0 0.2 moles. So 0 0.2 moles dm to the minus 3. So again, what I do on the calculator is I say, well that's 0 0.2 moles in a thousand centimetres cubed. So, you can see where this is going. 0 0.2 is moles in a thousand centimetres cubed. So I divide that by a thousand. That gives me the moles in one centimetre cubed. Times it by 50 and that gives me the moles in 15. It's 0 0.2 Zero 0.01. So I'm just going to write here 0 0.01 moles. So that's the number of moles of ethanoic acid in 50 centimetres cubed of the solution. Now, I found that quite a few students, they have difficulty understa in understanding the idea when one reactant is in excess over another one. This is why I've written these numbers above. It's the equation, the balanced equation tells us one mole of this, the ethanoic acid, reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. And we've got 0.01 moles of ethanoic acid, but we don't have 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide. So we don't have enough sodium hydroxide to react with all of the ethanoic acid that we have there. So what's going to happen is only the first 0 0.0005 moles of this are going to react because that's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So I found something that works for the students that I teach. It may sound a little bit silly or childish, but if it helps you understand it, then that's fine. Imagine this is a school disco. These are the boys, and you've got, say, five boys, and you've got 50 girls. I'll just write that down. So you've got five boys and 50 girls. So, lucky boys anyway. Right, now supposing they all want to dance as in pairs, as partners, and we will keep things simple. I know we live in enlightened times, but let's say that a boy wants to dance with a girl. Well, all the boys are going to find a partner, so they're going to be 50, sorry, five couples, yeah? Five boy and girl couples. But you're going to have 45 girls left there with nobody to dance with. And it's a bit like this. All the sodium hydroxide is going to react. So we're going to make uh, 0 0.0005 moles of this one. 
but not all of the ethanoic acid is going to get a partner, if you like. So we've got to subtract that number from that number in the same way that we subtracted that number from that number. So it's going to give us 0 0.0095. 0.0095 moles of ethanoic acid uh, left over. This will go completely and this has been formed and of course we'll make the equal number of moles of this one. Similarly we need to take into account the effect of making 0 0.0005 moles of sodium ethanoate on the total amount in the buffer system. Because if you remember, the um, concentration of sodium ethanoate in the buffer was 0.15 moles dm to the minus 3, and the volume of the buffer was 50 centimetres cubed. So I can work out the, the number of moles. So on the calculator, I just do um, 0.15, that's the number of moles in a thousand centimetres cubed, divided by a thousand, and that gives me the number of moles in one centimetres cubed, and times it by 50, and it's telling me 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So that was the number of moles of sodium ethanoate in the buffer to start off with, and I've added to that. Um, 0 0.0005 moles. So now in total I have got 8 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So total number of moles equals 0 0.008. Okay. And now in a position to work out the concentration of uh, the ethanoic acid and the sodium ethanoate and then I can use the expression for the acid dissociation constant to calculate the H plus concentration and then the new pH. So let's deal with the, um, the ethanoic acid first of all. We have, uh, I'll do that in black when you can see it better, so we've got 0.00 nine five moles of ethanoic acid left over and they're in a volume now which is 51 centimeters cubed so we had 50 centimeters cubed of the buffer but we've added one centimeter cubed of the alkali so the total volume is 51 centimeters cubed now sometimes in the exam questions they tell you to just ignore the small increase in volume when doing this part of the calculation. So for example you might be just adding one centimetre cubed to a, a decimeter cubed and it's only a very small increase. Um, but just for the sake of completeness to show you how to do everything here I'm just going to allow for that. So what I do on the calculator, again I don't use all of these uh, magic triangles, I think they cause more confusion. Um, so I just write um, 0 0.0095, that's the number of moles that I've got in 51 centimetres cubed. So if I divide that by 51, that gives me the number of moles in 1 centimetres cubed. Now I wouldn't normally write this down, I just leave it on the calculator, but I'll just show you what I'm doing. So if I do 0 0.0095 moles, and I divide that by 51 centimetres cubed, then it's telling me I've got one point. 86 times 10 to the minus 4 moles in each centimetre cubed. So if I've got 51 centimetres cubed, I've got 51 lots of that, which comes to 0 0.0095. As I say, I wouldn't normally bother writing that down, I would just simply put into the calculator 0 0.0095 divided by 51, that gives me the moles in 1 centimetre cubed, and I want it as a concentration, so I want to know moles in 1,000 centimetres cubed, which is obviously that times 1,000, so that's 0 0.186 moles 
in a, cent in a thousand centimeters cubed, which of course, because that's a decimeter cubed, it means my concentration is 0.86 moles dm to the minus three. So I'm just gonna write that above the equation. So here I've got uh, the new concentration of ethanoic acid is 0.186 mole dm to the minus 3. Right. Now I appreciate that I've given that to three figures. I tend to just look at the significant figures at the end of the calculation. I I always carry a few more significant figures than I need to during the calculation, then at the end I just double check and see what level of significance my answer should be to. So now I've got, so you can see that we started off with um, 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid and it's dropped down to 0.186, so that's the action, that's, that's, that's how much of the ethanoic acid has been used to neutralize the added alkali. We can do the same thing over here. We have, um, We've got a total number of uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 3, so we've got 0 0.008 moles of sodium ethanoate, CH3COONA, in a total volume of 51 centimetres cubed. So again, no magic triangles, none of that. I just put in the calculator 0 0.008, and I say to myself, that's the moles in 51 centimetres cubed, divide it by 51 and on my calculator now it's giving me the moles in one centimeter cubed and then just times it by a thousand to get the moles in a decimeter cubed and it's now 0. I'll do it in the same color it's now 0. 0.156 I'll call that 157 it's more by 68 moles dm to the minus three. And you can do a quick reality common sense check. We are expecting the concentration of the ethanoate ions to increase slightly because we've generated some in this reaction and that's what we see. They started off as 0 0.150, now it's 0 0.157. So the concentration of this one's gone up a bit and this one's gone down. So all we need to do now is um, use these concentrations to calculate the H plus concentration. So I'll do that up here. And um, so I'll just remind you of the equation. The Ka equals the concentration of um, the ethanoate ion, which is going to be identical to the concentration of the salt because they dissociate completely over the concentration of the acid, which is here multiplied by the H plus concentration and I've just shown you earlier on in this tutorial how to rearrange to get this the equation in this form. So if I put in some values now, this is a constant, these two we've adjusted so we're going to see what the H plus concentration is. So we've got 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 mole dm to the minus 3 so that's going to be uh, 0 0.157 mole dm to minus 3 over uh, 0 0.186 mole dm to minus 3 and that's going to give me my well, multiply by the H plus. I think I'm going to have to make some more room under here and so on the calculator, I do 0.157 divided by 0.186. So that gives me 0.844 times the H plus. And this is going to be 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3. So again, I wouldn't normally write all of this down, but just to help those who are not as confident in the maths as everyone else, so I just cross multiply, put this one underneath, so 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 divided by 0 
0.0844, that's going to equal my H+. Plus. I know it's tedious putting in all of these units which do cancel down, but notice how I get the units that I expect, that's an internal check on my calculation. And I, I do strongly recommend you do this all the time because so many people lose marks not because they can't do chemistry but they, they make careless mistakes because they're not setting out their uh, calculations uh, as thoroughly as what they should do. So I'll just flip that over and 1.7, 10 to the minus 5 and my H plus concentration is now 2.01 times 10 to the minus 5 mole dm to the minus 3. And to get a pH I just take log of the answer gosh I've done that wrong um, log of 2.01 10 to the minus 5 equals minus 4.69 so I so log of that is minus point minus 4.69 I'll just write it down log of 2.01 times 10 to the minus 5 equals minus 4.69 well it's actually 6968 so I'm just going to put minus 4.7 so the pH I just reverse the sign now and it's 4.7 so you can see how the pH has gone up from 4.6 to 4.7 so it just shows you that um, when you when a buffer is challenged with a small amount of alkali, the pH does change, and this is how you calculate it, and it's because it's affecting this term. You can do the same thing um, if you add a small amount of acid. Uh, you've then just got to uh, look at the effect of adding a bit of acid on these concentrations, and I'll show you that now. I'm now going to carry out a similar calculation to find out the effect on the pH of the buffer when we add a small amount of acid and again we're using the ethanoic acid ethanoate buffer here are the initial concentrations and they give the initial pH of 4.6 so we're going to add a small amount of hydrochloric acid and because it's a strong acid then we can assume complete dissociation so the concentration of H plus ions will be the same as the concentration of um, hydrogen chloride. And the way the buffer deals with this is it uses the, um, the ethanoate ions. They combine with the H plus ions to make more of the ethanoic acid. So they will give uh, ethanoic acid. So this time the concentration of ethanoic acid in the buffer, the intact molecules will increase slightly and the concentration of the ethanoic ions will de decrease. And we need to calculate those values so that we can calculate the, um, the new pH of the buffer. So I'm just going to write a, uh, an equation for this neutralization reaction. So we've just said that um, the ethanoic ions react with the added H plus from the acid and they give us ethanoic acid. But um, what I'm going to do is just um, write that as the sodium ethanoate and that as HCl. I think it looks a bit more user friendly and then of course we must show that the, 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 the spectator ions, if you like, they're forming sodium chloride. So this is the neutralization reaction that's occurring in the um, in the buffer and again we have to work in numbers of moles so the equation says one mole of the salt would react with one mole of the acid to give one mole of this acid and one mole of sodium chloride. Let's just look at this in a little bit more detail, what's going on. Sodium ethanoate, um, because it's an ionic compound, in, in the solution it will be dissociated completely into these ions, the ethanoate ion and the sodium ion. This is a strong acid, so it will be dissociated completely into H plus ions and chloride ions. Now, the 
ethanoate ion and the hydrogen ion, they combine to give ethanoic acid, but because that's a weak acid, it will be present as intact molecules. And then the sodium chloride, because it's, when it's dissolved in solution, of course that will occur as the dissociated ions. So that will be Na, sorry, sodium ions and separate chloride ions. But what I'm doing is just writing this as an overall equation here, but what's really happening is um, the spectator ions, we can remove them. What's really happening is it's the ethanoate plus H plus giving ethanoic acid. But let's, uh, I must be living on a hill here. Let's look at the calculation here then. Now, we started off with um, 50 centimetres cubed of 0.15 moles dm to the minus 3. That's the concentration of sodium ethanoate in the buffer, and we had 50 centimetres cubed of that buffer. So if I do the calculation, I just do um, 0.15, that's the moles in 1,000 centimetres cubed. Divide that by 1,000 and then times up by the volume that I have, which is 50 centimetres cubed. So it's 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So it's, I'll just write that in a different, a different colour. So we have 0 0.0075 moles of this one, of the salt. Okay. Now, the hydrochloric acid, we added uh, one centimetre cubed of 0.5 moles per decimetre cubed. So what that's saying, in a thousand centimetres cubed, you've got 0.5 moles. So to get the number of moles in one centimetre cubed, we divide that by a thousand. So that's just going to be um, 10 to the minus 4, 5 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'll just put it as 0 0.0005 moles of HCl that we have added. And again, this one is in excess, so there isn't enough HCl to react with every mole of um, sodium ethanoate. Only uh, the first 0 0.0005 moles of these will react. So if you do 0 0.0075 and take away 0 0.005 moles, of course, you have 0 0.007 moles remaining. So in other words, um, along comes the HCl, and because we've got 0 0.0005 moles of HCl, that's the number of moles of the, the um, sodium ethanoate that will be used. So you subtract that number from what we started with, and you get um, 0 0.007, so it's minus 0 0.005 moles. And then if we look at the um, concentration of the... Um, ethanoic acid, we, uh, in the buffer, we had, um, it consisted of 50 centimetres cubed of 0 0.20 moles dm to the minus 3. And I showed you that that means you have um, 0 0.01 moles altogether. But we've made 0 0.0005 moles, so now we have um, so plus 0 0.0005 moles, and the new concentration or the new number of moles will be 0 0.0105 moles because we've made when the when the protons from the HCl added on to the ethanoate ion, we've made some more of the ethanoic acid. So we've made 0 0.0005 moles and add that to what we started with and we get 0 0.015 moles. 
Okay, so um, I'm just going to write that directly underneath the equation. So all the HCl has gone, of course, and this one now we have 0 0.0105 moles. And this one we have 0 0.0070 moles. Of course that's gone. So again, we need to convert these to concentrations so that we can calculate the um, hydrogen ion concentration using the expression for the acid dissociation constant. So I'll just do this uh, directly on the calculator. So what I did is uh, I've got 0 0.007 moles of that in a total volume of 51 centimetres cubed. So divide that by 51. So that's the moles in one centimetre cubed, and then I times it by a thousand, and I've now got uh, 0.137 moles dm to the minus three, which again is what I might expect because we started off with 0.15 um, and we expected it to go down a little bit. And then this one over here, uh, we've got 0 0.0105 moles and they're in a total volume of 51 centimetres cubed. So divide by 51 and that's telling me 2.058 times 10 to the minus 4 moles in uh, 1 centimetres cubed. So I times that by uh, 1,000 and it's going to give me a concentration of 0 0.20. Well, I'm just going to put make that into a 6, round it up. But the concentration is uh, 0 0.206 mol dm to minus 3. And again, it's a sensible answer because we started off with 0.2 and we expected it to go up a little bit because we were making um, more of the ethanoic acid. So I can go back to the, uh, the equation for the acid dissociation constant. So if you remember, Ka is the concentration of the ethanoate ion over the concentration of the ethanoic acid multiplied by H plus concentration. And we know this one is uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 and the concentration of the ethanoate ion that's going to be the same as the concentration of the sodium ethanoate of course because of the dissociation so I just write in the 0.137 mole dm to the minus 3 and the new concentration of the ethanoic acid is 0.206 mole dm to the minus 3 and that would be multiplied by the H plus concentration to give this one. So again I can uh, work that out. I'll, I'll put in all the steps just to help those of you who are not mathematicians. So I just do 0.137 divided by 0 0.206 so that gives me uh, 0.665 and of course the units cancel out that's going to be multiplied by the H plus and I've got 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 here so if I cross multiply so 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.665 uh, units of course moles dm to minus 3 that's going to give me the hydrogen ion concentration so if I work that out so um, where am I 1.7 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.665 that gives me 2.5 2.556 I'll, I'll just put 2.56 times 10 to the minus 5 moles dm to the minus 3 
that's my H plus concentration. So I'll take the log of that. So I'll just do log of my answer, and it's giving me a value of four point minus four point five nine. So I change the sign. It's going to be pH equals four point. I better just leave that to three figures, otherwise you won't believe me that it's gone down from four point six. Okay, so the pH has dropped very slightly because of the uh, the, um, the the buffer has had to deal with some added H plus ions, and so what that's done is it's made this one very slightly smaller and this one very slightly larger and so you can see it's worked very well to keep the pH close to the 4.6 I suppose I should look at what the 4.6 where that came from if I just put the original values in there and do that to the same number of significant figures so this one was initially 0.15 and this one was 0 0.20 times H plus so Let's just see what the so if I do 0 0.1 whoops 0 0.15 divided by 0.2 that gives me that 1 over times 1.7 uh, 10 to the minus 5 that gives me H plus concentration take the log of the answer and yes it's actually the pH um, was 4. 6, 4, so 3 figures. So now you can see, if I do it to 3 figures, you can see how the concentration or the pH of the buffer has uh, fallen very slightly. So that just shows you that I don't rehearse these calculations. I mean, you know, you just, you just, you, you, what, what you see is what you get. Okay, and, and that's the attitude you should take. You should just uh, do what you need to do and trust your calculations and check your work. And if there's something unusual or unexpected, then you can always check. I'm just going to run you through um, a question from an exam paper. It's uh, freely available from the uh, website of the OCR exam board. It's the uh, the F325 paper from June 2013, question 4. And I've chosen this because it's a good example of um, a method you can use to make a buffer, which is slightly different to the one I've just explained. Um, rather than adding the um, the the salt of the carboxylic acid, you can make it um, by neutralizing some of the carboxylic acid. So just to explain to you how that works, um, methanoic acid, it has, this is its stretcher of course, and um, if we react it with sodium hydroxide, then um, it's going to give sodium methanoate, which has this structure, HCOOO minus and Na plus. So the way that works is the um, the H plus ion in the salt is replaced by the sodium ion, the positive ion. So if you can imagine the the carboxylic acid dissociates into the H plus and the uh, and the methanoate ion and of course sodium hydroxide in solution will dissociate to give sodium ions and OH minus ions so the, uh, the sodium ions form an ionic bond to the um, methanoate ion so you get sodium methanoate and the H plus ions and um, hydroxide ions from the alkali, they give you H2O. So it's just a straightforward neutralization, an acid plus an alkali gives a salt plus H2O. And the reason this gives you a buffer is because you make sure the acid is present in excess. So when all of the sodium hydroxide has been used up in the reaction, there's still some of that left over but of course you've made the salt, so you end up with a solution of a weak acid and its salt, which, which are the components of a buffer. So all we've got to do is use the information given to us in the question to work out 
the concentrations of these from which we can work out the prevailing pH of the buffer. So um, we're told the methanoic acid, it says a, a chemist did this, they took 200 centimetres cubed of 3.20 mole dm to the minus 3 methanoic acid. Now, don't use all these silly formulae and magic triangles when you're doing these calculations. It's just common sense, really. If it's 3.20 moles dm to the minus 3, what that means is there are 3.20 moles in one decimeter cubed. And because a decimeter cubed is a thousand centimeters cubed, it's saying that there are 3.2 moles in a thousand centimetres cubed of this solution. And we have taken only um, 200 centimetres cubed, so in 200 centimetres cubed of this solution, that's a fifth, you would get a fifth of um, 3.2, and so you would get um, 0.64 moles. Okay, so I can write that underneath the um, equation. So I've got 0.64 moles of methanoic acid. And I do the same thing for the sodium hydroxide. We're told that the solution used was 0.500 moles dm to the minus 3. So that means 0.50 moles in a decimeter cubed, moles in a thousand centimeters cubed. And the, it says that the chemist used 800 centimeters cubed of this, so it's four fifths of that. So um, if we took 800 centimeters cubed, then that's um, four fifths of that, so we would have 0 0.4 moles of sodium hydroxide. So I can write that underneath the sodium hydroxide, 0 0.40 moles. Now, using the uh, stoichiometry of the equation, it's telling us that if we had one mole of the methanoic acid, it would react with one mole of sodium hydroxide to give one mole of the sodium methanoate. But we have only 0.4 moles of this. We haven't got enough to react with all of the methanoic acid. So only 0.4 moles of the methanoic acid would react. So after the reaction, we would have um, 0.24 moles of this one left. All of this would be gone. Each mole of sodium hydroxide reacting gives a mole of sodium methanoate, so if we use 0.4 moles of that we're going to make 0.4 moles of the sodium methanoate. Okay, I guess I should watch my significant figures here. They're working to three figures, so I'll make that three figures, three figures. So now that's the number of moles and we need to convert those to concentrations before we can um, use the um, acid dissociation constant. So 200 centimetres cubed plus 800 centimetres cubed is a thousand centimetres cubed. So that's the same as one decimetre cubed. So if we've got 0 0.240 moles in a decimetre cubed, then the concentration of the methanoic acid, what's left after this neutralization, is 0 0.240 moles per decimeter cubed. And in the same volume, we've got 0.4 moles of sodium methanoate, so the concentration of HCOONA is 0 0.400 mole dm to the minus 3. So I'm just going to keep into three significant figures because everything I was given in the question is to three significant figures. So what I'm going to do now, if I can just squeeze it in here, 
is write the um, the equilibrium expression for this, which defines the uh, the uh, acid dissociation constant. So I can say in this reaction, Ka would equal the um, actually it's not for this one, is it? It's for the me. Okay, try again. So I'm going to write the um, the uh, the I'm going to write the equilibrium. Okay, so after the neutralization process, then we've established the concentrations of methanoic acid and sodium methanoate. So I can write a, a, an equation for the um, the equilibrium reaction that's going to be at the centre of our buffer. We have um, methanoic acid HCOOH, which is in equilibrium with the methanoate ion plus the um, proton. So the methanoic acid is what was left over of what we added originally. We added 200 centimetres cubed of 3.2 moles per decimetre cubed and after neutralisation by the sodium hydroxide we were left with a concentration of 0.240 moles per decimetre cubed and the, um, the concentration of this one is going to be the same as the concentration of this one because the sodium methanoate will dissociate completely so I can put 0 0.400 mole dm to minus 3 and across this one and there's 0 0.240 mole dm to minus 3 so first of all it's asking you why does, um, why does this re result in the formation of a buffer well, I better explain that. Then when you've um, reacted, you've, you've neutralised some of the uh, methanoic acid. Um, some of the methanoic acid has been neutralised, so you've created the salt of the methanoic acid, but you've still got some methanoic acid left over. So the, um, the, the, the weak acid and its salt um, acts as a buffer, because the um, you, um, you create the... Um, ethanoate ion here, sorry, methanoate ion, that can intercept uh, H plus ions, and in doing so, it creates more of the methanoic acid, so the equilibrium moves to the left. And if you add a small amount of alkali, it combines with the H plus ions, and they get replaced by dissociation of the methanoic acid, so the equilibrium moves to the right. Anyway, let's um, let's just work out what the pH of this buffer is going to be. So the acid dissociation constant for this system is going to be the concentration of HCOO minus times the concentration of H plus over the concentration of HCOOH, the undissociated acid. And um, the time in the question that Ka is 1.70 times 10 to the minus 4 moles dm to the minus 3 and I just plug in the values that I have here so the um, methanoate ion is 0 0.400 mole dm to the minus 3 I'm going to multiply that by the concentration of H plus and then I plug in the value for the uh, methanoic acid which is 0 0.2 zero mole dm to the minus three and um, I can now cancel down some of these units moles and moles dm to minus three dm to minus three I do strongly advise you always to put your units in your calculations because they serve as an internal check and um, if you end up with the correct units then you know you've done the calculation correctly so if I do 0.4 divided by 0.24 so that's going to be um, 0.4 divided by 0.24 that's just now one point now let me just double check that 0.4 divided by 0.24 it's saying 1.666 now I'm going to write down uh, round that down to 1.66 I'll just stick 7 there I'm not going to round it down to fewer than three figures because I think that's what the answer should be in 
Oh no, the, the sending answer should be in two decimal places, but we'll deal with that at the end. Um, so it's going to be 1.6667 multiplied by the H plus concentration, and that will equal 1.70 times 10 to the minus 4 moles dm to the minus 3. Okay, so all I do now is I cross multiply. So this number, I just move it underneath here. So if I do 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 over um, 1.667, I'll call it moles dm to the minus 3, that will give me the H plus concentration. So um, let me do that. So 1.7, 10 to the minus 4 divided by 1.6666, I'll put equals, um, it's 1.02. Let me just put that up there now. So the H plus concentration is going to be 1.02 times 10 to the minus 4. And you see the units are moles dm to the minus 3. So the pH is just going to be the minus of log to the base 10 of that. So if I take the log of that on my calculator, log of answer, it's telling me minus 3.99 1. So I change the sign and the pH is 3.99. And that's to three significant figures, which is the um, the same as what I was given the original information in. The question's actually asking for two decimal places, but of course it's also to two decimal places. In this final section of the tutorial, I'd like to say a word or two about basic buffers. And as I said at the introduction, there's very little on this in the textbooks. Um, there is one example um, of a buffer based on uh, the weak base, which is ammonia. And here it is. And um, base is a proton acceptor. So here is a proton, a hydrogen ion. And what happens is the uh, the ammonia uses its lone pair electrons to form a dative covalent bond. So we now have the uh, ammonium ion. So the lump of electrons is now the bond going up to the hydrogen, which I have here. And the iron, of course, now has a positive charge. Now, it's important to keep in mind that ammonia is a weak base. It's not very good at accepting protons. So that means this equilibrium is a long way to the left hand side, so I'll make that arrow much heavier. And so if you dissolve ammonia in water, well, you've got um, the water molecules are sort of in equilibrium with H plus ions and OH minus ions. So what you're doing is making the solution more alkaline by removing H pluses and um, creating the more of the hydroxide ions. So you end up with um, ammonium hydroxide. So I just write that as an overall equation down here. In fact, I'll do it at the top here. So what we have is uh, H2O plus ammonia. And we have formation of the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So you have basically ammonium hydroxide. But the equilibrium is a long way to the left hand side because this is a very weak base. Now when we make a buffer out of this, um, we also need a high concentration of the ammonium ions. I'll show you why in a moment. But we've already got a high concentration of ammonia because this equilibrium lies to the left hand side. And all we can do is add this directly as the um, ammonium, an ammonium salt. So if we have NH4Cl minus, which is ionic of course, it's the ammonium ion and the chloride ion. If you dissolve that in, in water, 
it dissociates completely when it dissolves. So you get um, ammonium ions plus uh, the chloride ions. And so that means that we can get the concentration of this high without having to rely on it coming from the uh, protonation of the, of the ammonia. So that's how the buffer works then, we have, or how it's, how it's set up. We have a high concentration of this, which is added directly. And we have a high concentration of the ammonium ion because we have added it also directly. And the way the buffer works is if I challenge it by adding some um, H plus ions, then we have a high concentration of ammonia to combine with it and it would give us the ammonium ion. So the equilibrium is moving to the right hand side when we add H plus ions. And if we add some hydroxide ions, then of course this equilibrium moves to the left. And that's basically all there is to it. I've not seen any calculations on um, on basic buffers. So, um, good. Well, if you want to learn more about buffers, then subscribe to the channel and you will be notified um, when I post them. So I'm planning additional tutorials on um, the PKA and some of the more advanced topics. Thank you.